Strategic Hot Box with Dr. Brandy Love Stankovic. Discussing leadership, business, and how to take control of your life and achieve greatness. From the streets of Las Vegas, energized, informed, and never diluted. It's time to kick some ass. Welcome back to the Strategic Hot Box. It's your girl, Dr. Brandy Stankovic. And today's topic is lipstick authentically. And we have a couple guests with us, or one guest, a couple guests mixed into one. We have Dan Marquez with us and Madame Nymphadora. Can't wait to hear more and learn more. Let's get started. Being authentic is so important. And the, the idea of today's topic is is about just that and how to, what do you do? What are the challenges and struggles to really truly show ourselves to the world? And it's more important than ever to be our authentic self. It's exciting to see when people really do pick this up and own it and then they feel successful from that and are able to kind of brush off any of the negative piece that, that may come along with that. So what happens when your authentic self is literally two different people? And maybe that means you're at work persona and you're at home persona or maybe that means from an introvert standpoint, it's the face that you give to the world or when you're on stage, or maybe even he's like an after dark persona that not everybody should know about. Oh, I think more of us have that than, than we might realize that. But today we're going to talk about somebody who really embraces their entertainment self, as well as, as the self that they are in the working environment from day to day and provides some love and entertainment on both sides of that throughout the journey. Now, how does one become more authentic? Y Scouts, which is a search firm, they they say that their mantra is to hire on purpose, and they're they think that a, that a leader has to possess some of the qualities of being their authentic self. And part of that is through self-awareness. And we've talked about that on the, hot, the podcast of using maybe a, a personal SWOT or using your own uh, perceptions of others or your brand or any of those things to say, where am I? And constantly reevaluate this. It's so important to continue to, to revisit our, our own awareness of ourselves and make sure that as our windows and our shades and our glasses glasses in our rear view and our, our windshield, all those different perspectives change that we're also re-reviewing our own assessments. The second piece is to focus on the long term. And so understanding what the eyes on the prize, baby, it's understanding what's at the end, the light at the end of the tunnel. It's getting us where we want to be because temporary setbacks can be just temporary, or you can let them impact you forever. As long as we're focused on the end result, the goal, then that'll be the target that we're aiming for going after. The next, when it comes to being authentic, is being consistent in that. This isn't a the mood that I'm in today, one of my many personalities that you might see if you hang out with me, but it's about being consistent and being aware of that impact and behavior on other people. So it's, it kind of loops back to that self-awareness component, but how we react in different situations, how we uh, can be reactive, I think that, or defensive, or those different mechanisms that we might have in play to, to in, in situations, just be aware of that and be consistent in our overall approach. And finally, listen up. And because life really is a teacher, the more experience that we have, the more able we're able to confidently give ourselves to the world. So being open to contradictory views, they may not be something that you're suddenly going to change your mind and start believing differently, but it could be a way to learn from the experience, to understand perceptions of others and mold and adapt and grow. I think that we can be situational while still being authentic. Sometimes I think people get down the, the mode of, I have to be just raw, the rebel in order to be authentic. That isn't true. I can be the best version of me for the situation and still be me. Now, we don't want to wait any longer. I want to bring on our guest, Dan Marquez, of course, friend, colleague, and credit union lifer. And he's also going to introduce us to Madame Nymphadora, his drag personality. Now, Dan's an active young professional in the industry and financial services. He's a credit union advocate. He's also a DE, so shout out to our DEs out there. He's a YMCA committee member. He's also part of the Lincoln Chamber of Commerce YP group and an advocacy committee member for the 
Nebraska League. Now, Madam Nymphadora is an entertainer that, that believes in empowerment and engagement and education. She also performs monthly at Screamers Dining Cabaret. So go check her out. I really want to go see one of those shows. Live drag show. And she's working with a the Nebraska AIDS Project to offer more rapid HIV and AIDS testing to high school and college students. So there's a social mission and entertainment factor as well. So without further ado, please join me in welcoming Dan. Hello, Dan. How are you? Well, good. Hello, Brandy. Thank you. How I'm so you? excited that you're here. What do we? What should we know about Dan Marquez? Oh, Dan is very passionate. Um, <laughs> has a lot of personality. And uh, in in the, your growth and journey as a leader, has it have you always known from when you were a little kid that you would be in financial services? Oh my gosh, never. Um, when I was a child, my mother worked in a credit union actually, um, and so a bunch of us kids were all around the same age and um, uh, grew up as the credit union kids. And when I became a young adult, I w had organized and founded a nonprofit youth choir in my hometown of Alliance, Nebraska. Mm -hmm. And there was a position open at the credit union where we did our our banking and. I applied and I didn't want to do it. I didn't want a nine to five like that. But once I got in, fell in love with philanthropy and education and the financial literacy component. And uh, it's, it's like you said, I'm a lifer now. That's amazing. And when it comes to being authentic and, and living through maybe the entertainment side of you, when did Madame Nymphadora come about? Madame Nymphadora came about last June, actually. Um, I am a vocalist and had previously auditioned as Dan uh, for American Idol and The Voice and went through several cycles of that. Um, and for a while, I kind of hit a point of entertainment burnout and didn't know the direction I wanted to go, tried some songwriting, it wasn't really my forte. Um, and then I really uh, got exposed to Drag Queen Story Hour and seeing how uh, through the expression of drag and artistry and entertainment, we're educating children on, on different issues. And for me, it was, why aren't we doing this with financial services? Mm -hmm. uh, so that became a big mission of mine. And um, it really just kind of became word vomit uh, at the Young Professionals Conference mm -hmm. last June. I was talking about uh, what's going to be a DE project. And as I was asked that question, my answer was, I am going to establish a drag queen persona that's going to specialize in financial literacy, advocate for credit unions, um, advocate for community, social needs, mm -hmm. and entertain people at the same time. I love it. And we had you had the chance to meet my boys and we were yeah. heading out on to Fremont Street in our uh, Wizard of Oz. Uh, what do we call it? The, the <laughs> hipster, Wizard, hipster of Oz. Wizard. Thank you. Hipster Wizard of Oz, which was absolutely a crack up. We had so much fun in that. And you were the Emerald City. And part of that, that costume is you were in heels. Right. And so um, I just setting the stage for those that are listening because it was such an important moment. And my boys had don't have haven't been to a drag show, don't have other individuals in their lives where they're, and they're just in that place of their own learning of the world of establishing what they think or the world teaches us to be certain roles, right? This, so mm -hmm. this, this man, uh, we have uh, several men in our lives that have long hair. So this man, other men don't have long hair. And so what does that mean? Right. And so uh, we, they, they love to call themselves hippies and, and things like that. Cause as you know, they have long <laughs> hair or if, if that female, why is she acting in that certain way? And so when they saw the costume and saw on heels, my youngest son, six of the time went, wait a minute you have a, a female or a, those are female shoes or whatever he said to him and or to said to you. And I loved how uh, beautiful and calm and open and non-defensive you were in just sharing with him. Yes. I'm in a costume. Isn't this fun? And he was like, yes. And then it, it was like a non-issue after that. And, and since then they, uh, my new favorite song is that, that lips heals, you know, which one I'm talking about. I don't play. I slay. And so, I uh we I was strutting around the house and then they're strutting too and there's no there's no kind of uh, stigma embedded in them based on that. Does that yeah. make sense? Yeah, totally. And I so I, I appreciate your approach in how you're going after this and how progressive this concept is to show inclusion while also showing kids it's okay to be authentic as well. Most definitely. And, and just to add, you know, on top of that is Drag Queen Story Hour, we, we focus a lot of books on um, 
inclusion and diversity and understanding that there are so many different people in our in our universe and that we need to share love and accept love and have open hearts and open minds so that's an important mission and 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 really through teaching someone who doesn't know and kids are the perfect example of that they haven't been embedded with uh discrimination or some of those other pieces and they're coming into it eyes wide open. And if we can teach those messages young, both financial literacy as well as inclusion, I mean, that's a beautiful thing. Absolutely. It's awesome. We can change the world if we can do that. That's what we're hoping to do, right? So um, I have the chance to sit down with Madame Nymphador, as you know, recently and talk to her about her journey. So let's hear what she had to say. All right, Madame Nymphadora, she is a uh, credit union drag queen. She has soul, class, and a whole lot of sass. Uh, she <laughs> derived from the loss of financial literacy that we see within our credit union space, as well as LGBTQ plus empowerment within our space. I love the empowerment word that you that you shared there, and Madam uh, Nymphador shared there. I love the whole lot of sass. I feel like there should have been like snapping along oh, yeah. with that, right? The old uh, what was that show um, where they did the? You know what I'm talking about? I use references, oh, yeah. and my brain can't even pull can't even pull them back. <laughs> Thanks for having my back there, Dan. Um, so, how can you live, or how are you living more authentically through both Dan as well as Madam Nymphadora? Um, You know, the drag persona is something that I've identified as uh, really saving me. Um, mm -hmm. there, are, there are a lot of points I think that we can spend in our lives getting so caught up in our head by listening to outside distractions and things that society tells us. Mm -hmm. And uh, one thing that, again, the beautiful RuPaul says is, I don't dress up in drag for anybody else but myself. And what Madame Nymphadora has helped Dan identify is again, that own em empowerment and encouragement and self-love mm -hmm. and being able to comfortably and confidently share that that expression with other people that, that Dan sometimes feels a little bit too intimidated to do so. I love that. And I would imagine they'll ultimately be crossover as, um, as, Madame Nymphador has more chances to express and you have the more chances to express when you're in that persona that the confidence will be able to trickle, trickle between, right? Maybe. Oh, definitely. I will have to say that even this most uh, recent show that I did, I performed Lizzo's Good as Hell. And um, when I got done with it, I, I, in fact, made all the audience get on their feet and Ooh. stand and, and join in with me. Mm -hmm. um, but then I, I gave a powerful positive affirmation afterwards that, you know, self-love and body positivity, it is 100 percent at the forefront right now. And uh, just express that message. And, and it was so emotional for me going home and reflecting. I had an emotional um, reaction to it because I, in that moment, realized I loved myself oh, and that's yes. hard for a lot of people to embrace and identify. So sharing that is so important. Absolutely. I love that. And so does, all, does having that ability to express ourselves authentically, whether in, in your case, it might be the drag persona or someone else being able to come out of their shell, whatever that looks like is, does that help them be a better leader? You know, I definitely think so. It's helped me identify a few different things. Uh, for me, boundaries is is one of them. And having good, generous uh, respect and thoughts for assumptions of other people, I should say. Um, and, and being able to have those open communications with people without getting defensive and, and being able to have more of a level head. Yeah. Um, I asked, I had the chance to ask Madame Nymphadora what leadership meant to her. So let's check out what she had to say. Leadership to me uh, means embodying advocacy. And what that means is being an advocate not only for yourself, but as well as the team, the organization, your subordinates, the people that look up to you and report to you. Uh, that's what leadership is for me. I love that the balance that she has. She seems so uh, mature in her approach. Yeah, um, she honestly surprised me when I was watching that back. <laughs> 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 That's fun. The um, so when the how does the world receive Madame Nymphadora then and her message? And I know that all of it is you authentically. However. 
in some areas of the world, you live in the South, and in some areas, you don't have to talk specifically about your region, but in some geographic regions and in some communities, how is a drag persona received? Well, a drag persona can be received in a few different ways. Um, for me specifically, what I think a lot of culture, uh, Ru RuPaul is helping to shape that a little bit differently, but a, a lot of people might have a perception that drag culture is strictly in a bar or in a club. Mm -hmm. And that's been really important for me to um, kind of associate the, the drag persona and the drag culture with professionalism. Mm -hmm. um, my therapist tells me that he believes that drag queens are uh, the uh, revolution. We're, we are the people who are out on the front lines trying to um, make change for LGBTQ plus peoples. And, and I definitely believe that now living in this drag persona is you get to be brave um, sometimes behind all that makeup and that hair, but you adopt this personality that allows you to be fearless and courageous and go after what needs to be done. And how do you then kind of uh, hedge yourself against people that have opposing opinion? Open, honest communication. Yeah. Um, one of my favorite things out of the, the uh, dining cabaret that we perform at is it's not a uh, stereotypical gay club or a, an LGBT sanctuary. It is an everybody facility. So what's really great is the, the restaurants open right up until our show begins at 10 p.m. And I would have to say that maybe 80% of our audience are non-LGBTQ plus peoples. And what's really awesome about it is these, these people stick around because they're curious they've right. never seen a drag queen before our show producers a bearded lady um so <laughs> yeah. and it's live vocals we do not lip sync so it's it's really entertaining and it allows people to go you know what i'm okay with that i'm, I'm yeah. okay with having this conversation and there's real talent there too it's it's not it's seeing through somebody's mm -hmm. own stigmas to see that there's real human beings that have a positive message in a professional way with real talent and that's so important oh, for sure so we asked uh, madame nymphadora how, that, that essentially what can we learn from you and let's see what you had to say I think what other leaders can learn from me is a little bit of open-mindedness um, this is being a drag queen in the credit union space in any professional setting it's really really different it's really unique uh, it's something that a lot of people can bat an eye at uh, but this is something i think that a lot of leaders young leaders can learn from is being able to see something that might be out of the box and seeing how we can shape it to best fit the people our team uh, our organizations that we're working for yay that's so true and it is a it isn't traditionally an industry where drag is common Right. That is probably the most politically correct yeah. way I could say that. There aren't a lot of drag queens in credit unions. Now, there might be <laughs> individuals that work in this industry who also have personas, but you don't typically see it on the teller line. Mm -mm. No, definitely not. And I, I would just have to say that I think that what helped launch the courage uh, uh, to go forward with presenting Madame Nymphadora to the world was a lot of my LGBTQ plus members that would come in and have conversations with me about their life and their journey or mm -hmm. the drag queens that they follow. And, it, you know, just gives you that boost of confidence and support that, you know what, I'm going to do this. I don't need anybody's permission. I love it. And so um, I'm going to ask you some quick questions, some like you have to answer them fast, fill in the blank kind of stuff. Can you do that? All yeah, right, we'll have some fun it. with it. Okay. So the, the first couple are easy. So get us warmed up. So how about salt or pepper? Ooh, salt. Yeah. I'm the same way all the way. <laughs> and solids or patterns? Patterns. And heels or eyelash extensions? Oh, heels. Hate eyelashes. <laughs> <laughs> I would have said both all the way on that one. Oh, man. But you got it. Heels all the way. Okay. And then it fill in the blank. If I could, I would blank every day. I would wear heels every day. Yeah. I, I, I do wear heels every day. I literally was working with a financial institution the other day to change the dress code because they had limits on the heels. I'm like, yo, I don't have shoes that have heels that are less than two inches. Like, what? Why would somebody even yeah. put that on there? You know, anyway. Um, then the final one, the world would be a better place if... We shared more love. 
And we asked Madame Nymphadora that very same question. Let's see what she had to say. I think the world needs more love. Um, we, we hear it, we see it, we say it all the time. Uh, but how we can do more of practicing that love, I think, is embracing everyone that we encounter and their authentic selves, embracing who we are and our authentic selves, sharing that love and that message. That vulnerability allows us to really come together. Sharing love. That's like one of my favorite words, too. I mean, it's part of the podcast, yeah. you know. Um, and so that that's uh, one of the, the, the quick, the, maybe the final quick that we have for us is, do you learn, you love, or you kick ass? Oh, definitely all three. Yeah. Um, our, we're always learning, and it's important to love. If, if we aren't loving ourselves, we're not loving other people. And uh, Madam Nymphadora and Dan are kicking ass all day, every day. <laughs> all day, every day. And uh, <laughs> if somebody wanted to get a hold of you, how would they do that? Uh, social media. Madam Nymphadora is on Facebook, Instagram. She's not on Twitter or LinkedIn yet, uh, but Dan is on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, LinkedIn, either by Dan Marquez or Madam Nymphadora. Excellent. And I'd like to ask Madam Nymphadora, what's one action item or takeaway to leave our listeners with? Let's see what she said. Um, I think a, a good takeaway is something that RuPaul says a lot in, on Drag Race, and he said early on in, the, in an 80s or 90s interview that we're all born naked and the rest is drag. I think that's one of the biggest takeaways is that we make a conscious decision every day when we wake up and we put on the clothes that we're gonna wear and we the makeup that we wear, the wigs that we put on, the hats. Uh, we make that conscious decision and I think that it's a lot of fun to see what we're doing and that a big takeaway is that the next time you're getting ready for the next big event or your day at work, that you can remember to have fun with it because you're expressing who you are. And that can be tangible or metaphoric, right? That the makeup that we sure. wear every day can be actually the things that I put on my face or it could be really the face that I, tr I give to the world. Definitely. Most definitely. I think we all do that. And in leadership too, there's, there's, when we say there's a lot of different hats we have to wear, it's not always, uh, you know, a task based responsibility. Sometimes it's, it's different information and responsibilities. And any final thoughts from Dan for today? Any bold action items? You know, be brave. I'm a big Brene Brown fan. And um, a big thing that I hashtag a lot is in the arena. Um, and, and I use it a lot to tell myself that you need to be present now and in the arena. I love it. Thank you so much for being here with us today, Dan and Madam Nymphadora. And I need to see you in action. So all we got to make that work. Yes. We'll align that that schedule. Thank you so much. Good seeing you. Yes, you too. Thank you. Let's head out to our shout out and. Hi, it's Frank Marino, star of Divas Las Vegas, and I'm here with Brandy on the Strategic Hot Box. Come listen to our interview. It's going to be so much fun. We talk business. We talk drag. We talk makeup. We talk clothes. We talk how to make it in Las Vegas. And what I was just saying, <laughs> so we're heading out to the shout out and we have, we can't do a show about drag and not have the master, the king, the queen of Las Vegas, of course, Frank Marina. So thank you, Frank, for being here on the show and for the shout out. And for any of you that haven't seen his episode, please, please check it out. It's a great one. So thank you again to Dan also for setting the stage for us about having a conversation around authenticity and no better way to do that than to show both sides of the person that he lives in and, and gets to be every day. And that's really exciting to be able to show all sides of, of oneself. And so I urge anybody out there listening and a part of this to examine those things that maybe you are afraid to show to the world and see what you would like to, to unveil. So if you would want to improve in your authenticity, here are three tips, some kick-ass tips for you to implement today. Number one is to be self-aware and listen, right? Listen to perceptions, listen to the world, the universe, listen to your own heart and, and just understand, but be aware of how we come across because then we can adjust and be the best version of ourselves for any situation. 
Number two is to forget the haters. Brush your shoulder off. Do whatever you have to do to just to forget about all of the negativity that may come along the way. If we're putting ourselves out there, we are bound to have some additional feedback from individuals that don't agree with all sides of us. That happens with the side you put out every day, and it happens with the side that you don't. And the more that we can forget about people that aren't truly pushing you and helping you grow in your in your journey. And I think that that's an interesting balance between listening and forgetting the haters. And the difference for me is we want to always listen to perception. I always ask feedback for the people that I work with on how I can improve, how I can be better. Now, whether I implement that feedback, especially if it's coming from a place of hate, or whether I take that as a moment of perception and how I contributed to that perception, those are all important for me to understand and be aware of. And finally, number three is to love yourself first. Dan said that you have to love yourself before you can love others. And I I wholeheartedly agree that the more that we can do to to build some self-love into every day, the better. There's a top three for you. Kick ass. Thank you again to Dan and Madam Nymphadora for joining us. Being authentic to ourselves and who we want to be is so important. And if you want any additional information about Dan, head out to the strategichopbox.com. Or, of course, you can catch us on social media. I'm at at Brandy Love in Twitter and on Instagram and the Strategic Hop Box at Strategic Hop Box Instagram. And, of course, Facebook. Hit us up. We'll hook you up with whoever it is that you want to connect with. Until I see you again. Get out there and kick some ass.